Hey, Sunday, uh, I was talking to Phil Jackson during the pregame show. If you, if you were not with us, I want to reiterate what he said. He, he did mention that if Kobe got here around game time, he wouldn't have him rush out to the bench. What he would want him to do was ride a stationary bike in the back, warm up, get the legs going a little bit, get the heart pumping a little bit, and then have him come out about midway through the first quarter and probably then put him in the game. So what I understood was Phil's more inclined to play him tonight then sit him. We might see him about halfway through this quarter. Back up to you. One of the biggest stories during the Lakers dynasty at the beginning of the century was the push for a fourth championship in 2004 after the team added Gary Payton and Carl Malone to the starting lineup with Kobe and Shaq. Phil Jackson anticipated that the season would be a challenge, but as if managing four alpha male personalities wasn't enough, Kobe Bryant was charged with sexual assault before the season began for an incident that took place in Colorado. I'm going to share some of the background for this tumultuous year that began with fans expecting a guaranteed championship and ended with a shaky playoffs run and disastrous loss to the Detroit Pistons. Despite the disappointing finale, I hope that by the end of this video you'll see how some of the Lakers and Kobe Bryant's performances that year were extraordinary especially when the off the court issues are considered. What some new fans might not know is that while the team did look stacked on paper, the season was anything but easy. All four of the future Hall of Famers battled injuries and missed multiple games, so getting the full starting lineup out on the court together was not always possible. Gary Payton and Carl Malone needed to learn the triangle and adjust to vastly different roles than what they were used to on their own individual teams. Phil Jackson claims that it takes several years to truly learn the triangle offense and so getting everyone up to speed in a few months was not going to happen. And the biggest unknown of all was Kobe Bryant. Kobe's uncertain future both as a Laker and a free man are hard to wrap your head around when you truly understand what was at stake all season. It's hard to find a single season or player to compare it to. There were times when the team had no idea whether he would show up to a game or where his head was going to be during the game if he played. There were several unnecessary remarks and immature shots exchanged between Kobe and Shaq as their relationship was constantly on edge. The team was being held to an extremely high standard because of the roster when there was still a lot of work to do. Despite all of that, the way Kobe handled himself as a Laker was something perhaps no one else was capable of. This was a scene here at Staples Center just moments ago. Kobe Bryant, as we had talked about, in the building, and as Bill McDonald alluded to, going to get warmed up, ride the stationary bike, already perspiring, coming out being greeted by the crowd, and also Stu being greeted very warmly by his teammates, and he's coming right in the game. Before the 2004 season, Phil Jackson tried to reach Kobe multiple times and never got a call back. He and Mitch Kupchak discussed whether they could even expect Kobe to play. They considered offering him a leave of absence because it seemed possible that he might just decide to sit out the entire year. Phil Jackson wrote, No professional athlete, I believe, has ever tried to perform at the top level of his sport for any extended length of time while fighting to keep his freedom. One of the Denver defense attorneys said, The defense would want a trial as quickly as possible. I can hardly see Kobe Bryant going through a whole season with this thing over his head. Soon after, Phil and Mitch received word from Kobe's people that Kobe intended to treat the upcoming season like any other. On top of the already shaky relationship between Shaq and Kobe, Shaq had decided to rehab during the season the previous year, which Phil Jackson cited as one of the reasons they couldn't win their fourth championship in a row. Shaq had gotten out of shape in recent years and it was frustrating to the team. On the other hand, Kobe was dealing with a lot of pressure from the trial and it caused him to lash out or to be difficult to reach at times. He took quotes in the paper personally and even said that he wouldn't care if Phil Jackson came back next year or not. It seemed like a repeat of the last dance. In fact, Phil Jackson even referred to the season as the last chance. There seemed to be no way that Shaq, Kobe and Phil would coexist beyond this season. The team gave Kobe his space, helping accommodate his constant flights to Colorado and prevented reporters from asking the team questions about the trial. They decided to let Kobe deal with his situation and contribute wherever he could. Phil Jackson said, How he manages to compartmentalize is beyond me. On December 18th, Kobe showed up to the Lakers bench just before the start of the second quarter. Phil noticed that Kobe wasn't quite himself after inserting him into the lineup 
as he missed some shots down the stretch and the Nuggets were able to tie the game at the free throw line with two seconds left. As cool as can be. Lakers will take a, a timeout after this free throw is successful. Phil drew up a play for Gary Payton at the end of the game with Kobe as the second option. But when Payton didn't break free in the corner, the pass went to Kobe, who drilled the game winner. Phil Jackson later said he was his usual self after all. This would turn out to be a theme throughout the season. While others may have taken months or the whole season off to focus on the trial, Kobe was flying back and forth on a private jet to appear in court and try not to miss too many games. He would spend a day in court, fly back to LA, and ride in a van with the bike in the back of it so he could warm up on the drive to the game. Sometimes he would show up right around tip-off and the team would have to plan for adjustments in case he couldn't make it on time. The starting lineup tonight for the LA Lakers will be Kobe Bryant. And Bryant making the trip from Colorado. But the man in the middle, the man that sets the table for ah. everybody is Shaquille. O'Neal, and then, well, I have to include number eight because he sets the table for himself better than anybody in the league. This is one talented young man that can win them for you in the game. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Kobe hurt his shoulder. That's the same shoulder. Kobe in a lot of pain right now. Ran into a screen set by Richard Lewis. Lakers have to take a 20-second timeout, and believe me, they need it because he is in pain. And he shows pain, you know he's hurting. So let's uh, hope it's nothing serious. Kobe Bryant kneeling on the sideline, opposite corner from the Laker bench, being tended to by longtime trainer Gary Vitti. Another look. Well, running into the screen, he actually was being held up by uh, Ray Allen, so he's trying to get his arm out. So if he could have gotten his arm out of there, Ultimately, despite all of this weighing on him and even spraining his right shoulder again in March, Kobe played 65 games during the regular season and didn't miss a single playoff game. When he sprained his shoulder, the doctor said that he would be missing about four weeks. Kobe was back on the court after missing only two games and would average 27 points, six rebounds, and five assists the rest of the season. The Lakers, after having won only 18 of their previous 30 games, got Karl Malone back in the lineup shortly after Kobe returned and finished the season 15 and 4. Gets it back. Coming off that amazing fourth quarter against Orlando the other night. 24 points in nine minutes. He gets the goal there. Another notable game was against the Orlando Magic, where Kobe had a quiet first half and sat in the locker room contemplating his troubling situation with his wife Vanessa. The two had fought again that day and Kobe was not going to be spending that night at home. He ultimately chose to channel his frustration into taking over the game that Tracy McGrady had been killing the Lakers in. He offered to guard McGrady through the second half, but Phil Jackson said that they needed him to save his energy for the offense. After they went down 15 to start the fourth, Phil Jackson finally agreed to let Kobe check T-Mac. What resulted was one of the greatest fourth quarter turnarounds for any individual, where Kobe held McGrady to 5 points in the fourth and scored 24 of his own, sending the game to overtime where LA prevailed. Later on, after Tracy McGrady learned about what Kobe had been dealing with, he said that this game was how he knew Kobe was crazy. A few nights later, the Lakers suited up to host the Sacramento Kings, one of the teams that they expected to face in the playoffs again. Kobe dominated once more. Phil Jackson recalled the game saying, Kobe was brilliant scoring 36 points only hours after returning from another pre-trial hearing in Colorado. People wonder how he is able to focus on basketball after such an emotional and physically draining experience. I don't wonder. Kobe views these games in particular as opportunities to vindicate himself, to say, in effect, you've seen my face in the courtroom, now I'm going to show you the court where I dominate. At this point, the Lakers had won six in a row with Kobe averaging over 30 points on 50% from the field. Phil Jackson said that Kobe had reclaimed his title as the top player in the league. Even though he's played obviously so many games, Bryant, foul! Kobe Bryant with a chance for the three-point play. The Lakers back up by 20. Kobe no longer wearing the protective sleeve over that injured right shoulder. 
coming off that high screen here. That's a left-handed 15-foot <laughs> shot off the bank. Shoulder injury adding to his game now that he can shoot the left-handed shot with confidence. I'll be confident he's never even a flop. <laughs> 25 points now for Bryant. Also five assists and five boards. I'm not worried about it. I'm just, you know, like I said earlier, I think we worry about, I think we worry about, you know, and we can turn it on and off. And, uh, what about this guy's left hand? He's now done it twice. <laughs> All right, guy so athletic, probably one of the most uh, skilled players in the league. If anyone needed one reminder about who was the best player in the league, Kobe made sure to give them two during the last game of the regular season. With the division title on the line and Portland's playoff hopes hanging in the balance, Kobe hit two unbelievable three-pointers in the final moments of the fourth and double overtime, the second to win the game with only one second on the clock. Phil Jackson said, I suppose I should marvel at the two shots he made. I don't. I've seen too much from him. From Michael. It's banged up. No Bobby Jackson. Brad Miller, the key center. Uh -huh. That's a pretty good start. After a long day with some real problems. Can't necessarily stop him, but has played him well. Nice fake there. Brian, two for two to start. Look at that two-game swing to get to the top of the Western Conference for LA. Brian, so aggressive early. Kobe Bryant, eight quick points. Eight of the 12 for the 